this really shows that the deck level that was built. There is an underground uh, apartment structure that's in here uh, as well, which is, again, another uh, really engineering feat, considering how close we are to the uh, waterfront. Uh, you know, here's another kind of picture. These are, these are all interesting to me. The one uh, in the uh, upper right-hand corner there uh, shows how dilapidated the, uh, the piers were there. Uh, and then you can see it was a, in 1962, it was just a sort of a parking lot. So this was, this was basically uh, what Van Pier was just a few years ago. But, you know, Rose Warp was basically the same thing. The highest and best use was a parking lot. And then uh, it was not that long ago. But the other thing that's funny is if you were on the uh, city side, your view was of, you know, the traffic on the uh, expressway, the raised expressway. So that's another thing where the Levin Bells really had a lot of vision. They knew that that was coming down. And you know they waited a while, obviously, for it to come down. But it's sort of amazing how beautiful the Greenway has come out now, and how you know right now there are views on, on both sides that you know people. You know, I don't think if you're, if you're one of the hotel rooms before, you would have been disappointed if you weren't on the water side. Now it doesn't really matter. If you're on the Greenway side, it's a terrific view. If you're on the water side, it's a terrific view. It's you know all the way around 360 degrees. Uh, hotel statistics. Uh, I think you know, one of the pictures we see up there, which is it's a very nice amenity, uh, and I highly recommend it to everybody. Uh, they have some time if you haven't seen them. Uh, Norman Leventhal is keeping his maps, uh, some of his maps, in, uh, in the hotel on the first floor. Uh, and there are a couple of dozen uh, maps that go back to, you know, hundreds of years that show what Boston looked like. Uh, it's really magnificent, so it's you know, almost like a museum in there. Uh, as I mentioned, 230 guest rooms, uh, including 21 suites, uh, 15,000 square feet of waterfront function space. This room is one of them. And uh, I can tell you, I said a wedding here uh, last Friday night. It's a magnificent place. Uh, you know, the whole function, the whole wedding. Uh, our hotel manager, Stephen Johnson, is right over there. If anyone wants to book something after, after the event. Uh, but in all seriousness, it's, you know, it's really a, a terrific uh, venue, terrific event space. Uh, and I think the, the important thing is sort of locationally, this used to be at the sort of the edge, and now it's becoming, uh, you know, it's getting infilled by just a million things to do around this. And I think the Rose County Greenway has consistently picked up more and more uh, traffic, uh, which has really brought more people to this property as well. Um, the hotel right now has uh, four restaurants in it. And uh, including in room dining, the fifth. Uh, the alley bar, which I have some pictures of, uh, will show you how we activated it. Basically, it was sort of a pass through alley for people going to the uh, commuter boats. Uh, Rose Wharf Bar, we just upgraded. The Sea Grill is something that we just upgraded. Uh, and the Meritage uh, is a wine, you know, it's a restaurant that's in the second floor, but there's also a wine series that we had. And these are all things that were sort of developed. You know, believe it or not, it was difficult to get people to come down here initially. Uh, so all these things were uh, were built out in order to uh, try and get people to come down to the waterfront. Uh, and it's obviously become much easier as times pass and people are attracted to the waterfront. So you know, here's a montage, sort of picture of the front and access from the street and also from the inside of the hotel. Um, I think this is this is a, a picture of you know, a typical summer night. And one of the things that, again, what we did, you know, initially we continued, but initially we did a summer series where we provided entertainment and movies, uh, entertainment through uh, music acts and movies, in order to attract people to the waterfront. Uh, and again, you know, it seems like why do you have to, you know, do something like that to attract people? Why wouldn't you just come down anyways? Now it's sort of built upon itself, and uh, you know, it's sold out every single night during the, uh, during the week of the summer. It's a terrific amenity, it's a good time, it's great. Uh, so if you haven't done it, I'd recommend that you uh, attend. Um, there's some pictures here basically of sort of front on the uh, Atlantic Avenue side. And again, this is really becoming enhanced as the uh, Greenway has developed. And then I think this picture on the bottom right there is the one I really like because this almost looks like Newbury Street uh, on Saturday night, and I can tell you it was not like this when the property first opened. Uh, it was really a lot of work to get people to come down here. Um, again, it's just really come a long ways. And you can just see how 
it's just person to person. It's a great, <coughs> fun place. Uh, and this has now become uh, a destination for people instead of just kind of stopping by and saying, I want to go there. Um, again, here's some more. We've just recently upgraded the uh, Rosworth Bar. Uh, and then this is this is an interesting one as well. So John Crowell, who was the uh, previous general manager of the, uh, of the hotel, looked at this space and said, you know, this space is just sort of a passageway. Um, there's a lot of people that go through there. There's a lot of activity, but it kind of looks desolate. It looks like there's something we can do with it. So we came up with an idea called the Alley Bar. Um, and you can see it right here. It's not a difficult thing to do. Uh, but you know, what John did was he came up with a concept to um, add some tables, put an outdoor bar, uh, did it on a very, you know, sort of very tight budget because it's a short season for this. But as you can see at night there, we're getting people out there, we're activating this space. Um, and again, it's a space that was there, it was a passageway. I think these are all things that, this is something that would not have worked 10, 15 years ago because there just weren't enough people down there. Um, and now it's, you know, very successful. It's a nice stop for people. They enjoy it, uh, and you know we're going to continue with it. Yeah. Uh, this is sort of how you know, John shows how he laid it out. So not a, you know not a really complicated thing to do, but he saw a space that you know he really felt like needed something to activate it. And that's what we've consistently worked on: is how do we keep how do we keep the place active? Uh, and it's sort of the Yogi Berra type thing now of no one goes there anymore. There's too many people, uh, and so you know we're we're happy. There's so many people coming down here now. It's really an attraction. Uh, and just some recent acc accolades for the hotel. Uh, and again, it's been, we've had a couple of general managers who worked hard for this. Paul John, uh, prior to John Crellin, really worked hard to get us up to the five star ranking. Uh, it's a terrific hotel. I, I can't recommend it. We have a special event uh, to come by and you know, spend an evening with us. And also, by the way, uh, we treat our employees very well. Boston Globe's top place to work in 2012. Uh, not on the list, but actually number one. Uh, and then here's something that's sort of coming in the future. Uh, you know, everyone knows what it's like in the summer, all those pictures, you notice know, people wearing short sleeve shirts. So for this winter, uh, we are uh, in the final stages of getting a permit to put an ice skating rink underneath the uh, rotunda. So it'll, it'll be a uh, rink that uh, you know, about 15 or 20 people at a time will be able to ski on. Uh, and again, I think it's something that will just keep that activity coming down here. We'll allow the plants to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to open it up uh, sometime around Thanksgiving and then keep it open through the month of February. Uh, and then on the office side, so the thing that I find sort of amazing in the office side, which is where I spend most of my time is uh, leasing the office space, is that you can sort of see the tenants. We don't have a, a lot of tenants overall because we have a few very large tenants. Uh, but the property has consistently been well over 90% lease, which is pretty good. Um, and these tenants will pay upwards of $20 per square foot more than they would pay to be in other buildings that are nearby, uh, just because they like the, the overall atmosphere of the property, the quality of the property. Uh, I think having a hotel, uh, again, the mixed use environment, having a hotel is a big plus because the whole needs They'll use some of the conference facilities. We're going to hold meeting in room space and have a hotel cater it for them. Uh, so it really you know, brings a, a higher level of distinction uh, for this property that you know, others have trouble uh, offering. Uh, and then the other thing that's been important to us is sort of add unique retail. Um, so one of them was a local, a local company called Pasta Peach, who's, uh, they were in Newport. Uh, we were able to bring them up here. We do not have a ton of retail space. Uh, and the second one was, it was Starbucks, which is not necessarily unique, but people love it. Uh, and then just kind of get to the residential. Uh, you know, I guess this is really part of keeping this as a 24-hour uh, building. And it's just a, again, another big plus to have the property when you have people on, on site all the time. There's a major pride of ownership from the residents. Uh, they're very proud of the building. Uh, they, there are partners in the condominium where you know, they really want to keep it up. They, it's very important to them. And um, they, they were able to enjoy all the amenities of the waterfront, the greenway, the hotel. Uh, there's also a uh, full service spa that's here. If anyone follows the uh, Spencer for Hire series, Robert Parker, 
Spencer and Mark used to work out at the uh, spa here. Uh, and then I think sort of the last piece that's really important to the project, and by many people here today, is just an arena that offers a variety of services. So, you know, we have everything from the uh, water taxi, the commuter boats, uh, we have private slips. Uh, John Henry keeps his boat here. Uh, I can just tell you that when John Henry got married, uh, he sent his boat up to the North Shore to pick up his future bride. Uh, and then they came back here and docked it here, and then he went over and he got married at Fenway Park. But, uh, you know, this was sort of all, I think, part of the grand scheme of coming into Rosemore. This was made a little more special, I think. Uh, and then the, you know, the water tax at the local airport has been here forever. And, you know, certainly, it was a lot more important before the uh, new tunnel opened. Uh, anyone remembers the traffic that was back there? The, the water tax was a lifesaver for many people. Um, and then we've had things like the uh, tall ships that come in. Uh, it's been a terrific uh, uh, attraction. And uh, you can see the boat that's on uh, this large yacht that's on the right of John Henry's boat. Uh, which again, just sort of makes it fun to walk around with the one hour walk and checking out these unique boats. Uh, and then one more, so sort of coming soon, is we're working on a uh, lighting program. Uh, you know, so the building's obviously beautiful during the day, and what we're going to do is really show it off uh, at night, so we have a variety of uh, options we're going through. And with the, uh, the technology of LED lights now, we really feel like we can make the building pop. Uh, and then, you know, on sea level rise, um, I can look here, you know, today we really haven't had any issues. We, we certainly, because we're right on the waterfront, we are prepared for storms. Uh, and we have many short-term uh, procedures that we follow, including you know, evacuation, sandbagging, uh, you know, a whole multiple of uh, emergency procedures that our property management group goes through. Uh, but I think more importantly, though, is long-term. Uh, you know, we're starting the planning phase of looking at the whole building infrastructure uh, and determining, you know, as things need to be maintained, uh, you know, rather than doing a replacement in place, should we take that transformer and move it from the ground level and move it up to the section level, uh, HVAC equipment, uh, you know, other factors like that. So that's, those are things that we're looking at now. The building, as I said, opened in 1987. So, you know, at some point in the next 10 or 15 years, uh, there'll be some replacements going on. That'll be the right time to address those things.
24 hour use on the harbor. And, um, and I think you're, you, you did nail it that this was a visionary concept, and now one that seems to have a a mix of uses that taken together provide a, a whole suite of activities and also have fishing 24 hours a day. So you have 100 condominium owners in a property that's fairly active all the time. What do you hear from them about their concerns? Um, uh, you know, as to you know, sort of activity that happens around the night. And, and, and the reason I ask is because we hear from other places, some of which were built before this and which are, don't reflect the mix of uses that are here. And I'm thinking that um, that might be interesting to hear your perspective. Yeah, sure. I mean, I would say you know, one thing we work very closely with the, um, the owners committee. So uh, I think at some point you have to be sensitive to, you know, I think people would like to stay until midnight on a Friday night, but we would be sensitive to the fact that the residents at some point want to go to bed. So I think you have to be sensitive to that and make sure you have the time right. Uh, I would say, Bruce, for the most part, 99% uh, enjoy it, like it. Uh, as I said, they have a pride in ownership of the property just like we do. And uh, I think they're, they like the fact that people are coming here and enjoying it. And they probably tell their friends where they live, or they'll, they'll tell their friends you know, they should come by on a Friday night and we can watch a movie together. Uh, and then, and then they go upstairs if they want to and entertain them further. So I, I would say 99% of the uh, residents like it. And But I think at the same time, it's been going on for a long time, so you, you sort of know that it's here. Um, and so I think you know, we, we coordinated to let them know, and, um, you know what the plan is for the summer and everything is planned out at least five months in advance before we roll it out. Here's the axe, here's the nice. I think the only uh, thing that would ever change anything is the weather. John, I have a quick question. Um, the water transportation resource that you all constructed out there is tremendous. Um, is there um, capacity for any additional water transportation access at this point, or are you currently at capacity? Well, one of the things that we've been uh, Working with the T is that the docks are 25 years old now. So one of the things we've been looking to do uh, the T is uh, working on grants uh, for us to operate them. So we maintain them as they are today. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any uh, capacity for additional size. What we'd like to do is you know, upgrade the docks uh, and just have them you know, higher quality. Makes sense. Um, yes. Please introduce yourself. I'm sorry. So my question is about, um, you, you highlighted, uh, sorry, this is uh, Meredith Rosenberg from Harper Towers. Thank you me. mentioned the alley bar as an example of how you're activating an unused portion of the property. Are there other pieces of the property that you're looking to activate or expand current use? Do we feel that you're currently maxed out in both use and space? Yeah, some of the things we're looking at now on the outside, I think we're pretty maxed out. Uh, one of the things we're looking at on the inside, though, we have a gift shop and a business center in the hotel. So that's something we're looking at of, you know, could we put uh, some type of retail use that would be more open to the public? It, you know, it's, it was set up originally for retail use. As I mentioned, this area before the Greenway, uh, you know, opened up and we had the central artery problem, the village kind of separated from the rest of the city. Uh, and so we found that our retail traffic has picked up and we feel like we can get some more retail uses along the front of the building. The back is still a little challenging uh, because the season is shorter. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we're looking to do the nice skating rink is to bring people to the uh, property <coughs> in months that uh, the, the activity drops off. Suzanne? Suzanne Boy, War District Council. Uh, you showed us a photograph of lighting up in front of the building. Can you tell us how you're going to ensure that in lighting up the front of the building, it's not going to create too much light pollution or take away the darkness that, that we have in the evening so it's constantly daylight 24 hours a day? Right. Uh, yeah, that's something we're, we're, we're going to do a study on before we do anything, do a complete study on what it's like. We did do, actually, we did put some lights up uh, that were temporary lights to do a test uh, to see how much light would be reflected uh, causing that. So I think it's just, again, it's putting up some temporary lights, seeing what it looks like, uh, and then 
looks good and it's not offensive, then we'll proceed with, with uh, more permanent lights. Just a comment. Linda Jonas, from the Conservancy. Um, you should be committed for the, the activation you've done, the relationship with the Green Marina Parks, and, and really knowing public private relationships. Like, we just think you did a terrific job. Yes, yes, thank you. I was just going to comment on the Greenway. I think uh, for the hotel guests, especially the range time, you know, I, that's one thing I notice a lot of times I'll see little kids out there and they're fully clothed. Uh, and it says to me that they're probably staying at a hotel in the area and they're walking by and it's not a big deal to, you know, to run in and get wet because you're going to go back to the hotel and get changed. And I just, you know, I think the range time is one of those examples, just a terrific amenity for the hotel because it's fun, uh, it's nearby, um, everybody can use it. And I, like, like I said, I just I see the kids just having a blast. I see adults running through it too. But it just kind of says to me, they're not going to be getting into their cars and driving you know, someplace in the suburbs. So they must be someplace nearby. And if they lived here, then they would probably be in the bathing suits. So it's one of those things that I think the Greenway has been a very strong amenity for the hotel. John, I just wanted to say, uh, in 1987, uh, I was the uh, 16 year old transportation commissioner for the city of Boston, and Lorraine Downey was the 17 year old environmental director. So we were involved in permitting this project, but you guys far exceeded any of our expectations. Great job. Thank you so much. I, I wish I could take credit for it. I really, like I said, the, the way the property was developed, it was really, you know, the Leventhal family. And as I said, right, we just try to be the steward of, of what they started. Great job. Thank you. Uh, we move on to our next one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, sorry. Do you know what percentage of the condo owners stay in the property over the summer when you say 99% of people are um, enjoy all the amenities that go on? Yeah. I don't I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I know that um, you know I know that Paul is here because I see Paul out there enjoying the amenities. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know what you know what percentage are here full time. Uh, I, I I certainly see a lot of the, a lot of the owners. Uh, you know, at some point or during the week out. 